Uh, my name is Molly Toll, and I grew up in Rochester, New York, although I've lived here in New Mexico for the last 50 years. Um, and I currently work as a museum educator for the Office of Archaeological Studies, um, which is part of the Museum of New Mexico, and I'm here in Santa Fe. I um, work with students throughout the state of New Mexico with classrooms and with teachers um, because my background combines anthropology, history, prehistory, um, and botany. So um, um, I, I pay a lot of attention to connecting different disciplines and so the, the work that I um, do with uh, teachers and classrooms builds on that. And the thing about archaeology is um, there are very few archaeologists who are just archaeologists. Almost every archaeologist has a specialty. And I worked in a couple of archaeological digs where the preservation of plant materials was amazing. There was um, really well preserved these little tiny details of people's daily life. And I thought, okay, here's a hook for me. Here's what I want to do. I want to learn all about plants and where they grow in New Mexico and why they flourish in some places and not others and use that to look at people's um, uh, daily life and how it worked over time and space. Um, so I really first um, got involved in uh, being curious about what archaeologists do um, in college. And I, I just loved how it combined um, history, um, which we think of as written, with uh, prehistory, which has to be put together by looking at material culture, because there's uh, no writing to go with it. <laughs> um, and I just love that combination of anthropology and looking at human beings as just another um, organism with um, elaborate and interesting adaptive um, patterns and behavioral um, uh, modifications to deal with particular geography. I just thought that was fascinating. So broad stretches of time and space and comparing the way different people live. I just thought that was fascinating. So I went through um, four years of college and then two years of uh, graduate school and got a master's in archaeology. But by that time, I was really looking for a specialty. And that's when I got into botany and went back to school at UNM and did a master's in plant ecology, which made um, a, a huge difference in my ability to um, identify plant remains, little tiny fragmentary burnt uh, plant remains, and uh, mostly gave me the skills to figure it out on my own, what they were, because you can't look those things up for the most part. And um, so then I had a set of skills that I could apply to answering anthropological and archaeological questions using plant data. So, and I did that for several decades, looking through my microscope at little tiny things. Um, and it was, I thought it was fascinating what uh, botany could contribute to knowledge of um, what it was like to live in the past in different environments. I just, I got itchy to tell more people about the inter interesting stuff I was doing and the interesting stuff I was um, able to find out. So yeah, I wrote papers, I gave presentations at conferences, but I really wanted to talk to ordinary real people. And um, so every time there was an opportunity, I um, would work with a classroom or something if, if they contacted our office and they wanted somebody to come tell them about what people ate during the archaic or how they got their food. I really felt like algebra and geometry teach you to think logically, um, clearly, to, you know, put a problem out there and solve it one step at a time. Um, and I use, I use that um, algebra on a daily basis, just as a way of thinking out some simple problem. And um, I, uh, fractions, who would have thought fractions were so interesting, but 
they are. Um, I'm always thinking about, well, I'm three-eighths of the way done with that, or I need to do this in order to finish that. Um, and fractions are enormously helpful. You could never cook without fractions. Um, and my English teacher was amazing. I just learned yesterday that in a 1930 um, copy of my high school yearbook that um, Dr. Carver was teaching in 1930. How is that possible? He must have been ancient when I had him <laughs> in the 60s. And um, But he um, made me want to figure out how to make a, um, a decent sentence, a short sentence, a paragraph that fit together. And um, it was essential. I think about what Mr. Carver taught me all the time and I never got a chance to tell him. <laughs> Main thing, and I, I said this all the time to even very young students, is you just look for what what makes you excited or curious and figure out a way to make that into your life's work because um, you'll hate it if you do something that's boring. You'll just hate it. Um, and uh, if you if you love what you do, you'll be good at it.